welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 165, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. How are you? Hi, Marwa. How are you? I'm good. Well, um, we actually have two quick tips today. We'll try to get them both in in five minutes. Uh, the we When when Hayden and I did this show, we, we were pretty strict about not answering audience questions. Um, not because we couldn't come up with the answers, just because we weren't that nice. Um, but now that Marwa is uh, part of the show, she's so much nicer. Uh, and somebody asked uh, a question um, of, of us. Uh, and so we're going to answer that question right now. It's about select lists and how to uh, put them on the page in the place you want them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and hear, share your screen, Marwa. It's on. And you let us know how, oh, I see the problem already. That select list is yes. jumped off to the right. Exactly. And the question was how to put this uh, left uh, left side to the region and like there was not enough attributes or I don't know, maybe it was not easy for um, some developers to do it. So I'm going to go to the attributes of well, this. First, uh, you, first, yeah, first, can you show the grid lines? Let's take a look and see where that is. Yes, so here we can uh, click on show layout columns and we can see that this is actually placed in the in in the first column. Right? The second, the the second is, column. Select, select uh, the second. Column. Sorry, yeah. it's in the yeah. second. Exactly. And there are the rest of the columns. And if you'd like, Anton, you can start the timer maybe. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll start it right now. Perfect. Got it. Go. Okay, meanwhile, I'm going to open the attributes of this item and take a look at the um, layout section here. We have the column which is set to automatic value. I'm going to force it to the value one so that it starts from the first column. When I run my page again, I see that uh, it did not change much. So, <laughs> no, did not. If we focus a little bit, we can see that two columns are uh, provided for the label. And then we have the item in the third column. So maybe the label attributes, we can change them. So here in the layout section, there is the label column span, which is set to page template default. I'm going to put it to one. And then we can see that the item, yeah. This is the trick. Exactly. And it's taken only one column, which is the first column. Great. Um, and now that that makes sense to the labels in the first column, the items in the second column, the label is right justified. What if I wanted the label to the all the way to the left? Yes, so we can go to the region attributes there, template options, and here we can set the label alignment instead of right, we make it left. And ah, then we excellent. will have all the item labels set to left. All right, well, I actually kind of like it the way it was on the right, but that's how you can get that label moved uh, left or right. The label is always going to take a column and the row is going to, uh, the, the select list is going to take a column in this case. Um, of course, you can put, you can use a different one. You can put it up optional and float or floating in other places, but with this template, that's the way it works. All right, well, um, Marwa, that leaves me three minutes to, to sneak in the rest of our uh, second tip. So. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, and here we go. So I have this package X, X, I, V, S. Um, and I have a whole bunch of comments in this package. And as I've mentioned before, I really like writing documentation. I like writing help text and so forth, but I don't like having to write it multiple times. So I have this, this is here for developers, but I also wanted to be able to put this same set of comments in the application itself right here, but I don't want to have to repeat it. And in fact, I don't actually want all of the declarations in there. I only want the the, the comments portion, uh, but I also actually do want some things. So, um, so I, but I don't, definitely don't want to have to retype all of this. Um, so what I did was I wrote a little function. If I come back here, these are my comments. I wrote this little function called get PKS comments HTML. And what it does is it gets all of the source code of that package, but only rows that start with dash dash space 
or with GC underscore. So GC underscore or dash dash space because GC underscore is my global constant um, thing. I then, I then strip out that dash dash space and I just concatenate them together and that becomes marked. And I consider that to be marked down. I spit it out as HTML. I use the Apex markdown to HTML. And I then just created a region on this page right here that calls that function. And it's as easy as that. It converts my, um, my package spec into HTML and it looks just like this. And the key is that, um, the key is that my package spec uses markdowns. So, um, and it's, it's pretty much what you would expect, but the, there's a few little things. Before my code blocks, I do three ticks SQL. And at the end I do three ticks. I do things like three hashtags to do a heading. All of this markdown just gets translated, comes out and it looks like this. So, yes, um, so this is coming from inside the package that you wrote, right? Exactly. And what I, what's great is if I want, I can go a step farther and I can write one page that gives me access to all of this kind of thing. So I can look at all of my code, but not only can I look at my code, I could look, and this is on apex.oracle.com. You could do this too. These are the Apex APIs. So if I look at the approval API, for example, this is the Apex, the Apex documentation, and you can see they do the same thing. If you look at their package spec, their, the Apex package spec is going to have the same kind of markdown syntax that I just showed. Um, and so they're doing the same things with bullets and all the rest. Um, it's, it's really exactly the same as what I do here. Um, I'll show one more little trick that because I did all of this, I have two seconds left, I can do things like highlight code. Um, wow. I got that in at the last. Um, all I did there Great. was apply the uh, highlight JS um, uh, to to this, so I can turn off highlighting and so forth. Um, I'll give a quick a quick show on how I did that. Um, when I highlight the code, um, all I do is run this tiny little bit of JavaScript um, that uh, that does highlight all. So HLJS highlight all, and I put the the HLJS uh, highlight JavaScript. Uh, uh, up here, you know, this is the, the JavaScript um, library and the file URLs. Um, so that's really, really trivial. It's a way to get your JavaScript up and, or not your JavaScript, your, all of your package specifications looking really good as documentation. Yes, and that's great. And I think even when making changes or fixes to the package, changing the commands on the package, you don't have to come back here and type again the help text. That was key for me. I had I had no desire to come try and keeping them both up to date, but this is a way that I can I can have all of my my code. Um, and this is uh, this is going to become our standard here at Insum. We already have a standard that pretty much matches this. It, the only the only difference is using a little bit of markdown to to make things really really look good. I mean, I think all of these examples come out really nicely. Um, and and then, like I said, when you're doing it this way, you can you can go through all of your documentation if you want to do things like highlighting, making it easy to copy, and everything. It just becomes so easy to do. Uh, for, for all of your package specs and package documentation. Um, so that said, if people want this little function, my get, uh, get PKS comments HTML, I'll leave it up right here. It's 26. You can start copying it down really fast. Um, uh, no, I'm, I'm not gonna make you do that. Uh, I did write a blog post on it. The blog post is supposed to, um, supposed to publish at 1215. So I don't think it's quite published yet, uh, but in a moment it will publish. While we're waiting for, for it to publish, uh, Marwa, I'm going to um, remind people, um, it's worth checking out xkcd.com, uh, one of my favorite comic strips. I'm going to just show this one. This is uh, a week or so ago. Uh, I think this is really funny. It's how often I expected things to come up in my life when I was a kid versus how often they actually come up in my life as an adult um, and quicksand and grappling hooks. I thought I was gonna be falling in quicksand and needing to throw a grappling hook to get out all the time, but it has not happened yet to me. Um, not, not me either, but I still, I'm still afraid of that also till now. <laughs> so I don't know so why. 
No, so do you still carry your grappling hook on your belt all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see I can see you walking around town carrying a grappling hook <laughs> in your case. Uh, but even more than that one, even more than grappling hooks and, and, and this is as a kid, I never never had a concern at all about what to have for dinner. But now figuring out what to have for dinner is a constant chore. So um, anyway, yes. this is my my uh, my XKCD. Uh, you know, get, go out, take a look. Let's just see really quickly if my blog post actually um, uh, got published. And uh, it did. Look at this. We have marked this down, and it looks like it looks like it's there. So you can go out and get all of that right now. Um, it does not look like it formatted very well at all, um, and that's because I tried to describe this. Uh, you can see. Some of this stuff didn't work because it's got marked down in there. I'm going to have to go out and, and improve the way this looks. It looks horrible as a blog post. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But I think, uh, I think my function is there. Yes. So this yes. is the function. That's the part that you really. Oh, but look at it. It even missed. Oh. Because the problem is that. I'm trying to describe Markdown in my blog post, but my but Hashnode uses Markdown in their uh. syntax, so it gets all confused, um, oh, which means I have to figure out how I'm going to do this. Um, anyway, there it is. If you, you you can get it if you need it. Um, uh, Great. All right. Well, Marwa, I think that's all we have for today. Uh, do all the things. Uh, tell your friends about the show. Like subscribe, it, subscribe. Share. Right. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.